Joining me now, 2024 GOP presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Sir, thanks so much for joining the program. Good to be here. How you doing? Good, good. So we, we have these young voters. I'm a millennial myself. That was Gen Z. Um, you you yes. gained some support amongst that group. But I think a lot of young voters were surprised when you proposed um, a constitutional amendment uh, to lower the age to vote, unless they take a civics exam, raise the age, I'm sorry, of uh, voting, uh, unless they took a civics exam, exam or joined the military. Um, why did you do this, sir? So my view, Lawrence, is that every citizen in this country, including those who age into citizenship, should have to at least know the same things about the country that an immigrant has to pass in order to become a citizen of this nation. Young people don't value a country that they passively inherit. They value a country that we have a stake in building. I'm the youngest person ever to run for U.S. president as a Republican. Reaching young voters is critical, but what I see across the country, Lawrence, is that young people are hungry for a cause. They're hungry for purpose and meaning and identity. And we live in a time in our national history when faith, patriotism, hard work, family, these things have disappeared. So yes, I think we do need to revive a sense of a civic duty to satisfy that moral hunger for purpose and meaning. And so my experience in talking to young people in college campuses and otherwise across the country is, yes, there is a little bit of shock at first to say that, wait a minute, I have civic duties. I have to actually pass the same civics test that an immigrant had to pass but not, but to they're, become I, a citizen. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Vivek, but they're not yep. immigrants, though. They, they were born Americans. We give those to people that want to become Americans. I mean, even if you look at even conservative... My whole point, Lawrence. But even if yeah. you look at conservative groups, like the leading organization uh, to, to get constitutional amendments is the Convention of State. They want to limit government. I think it's rare that you see a yep. Republican that want some type of overreach of government to take rights away. So actually, Lawrence, and maybe this is a good area to be very clear about what my policy is. I want less governmental involvement. You want to know what exactly the government requires today? Today, young men are required to register for selective service. That's the draft on pain of criminal penalties. That means you can go to jail if you do not register as a young man, as you and I, I'm sure, mm -hmm. did between the ages of 18 and 25. So what I'm saying is decriminalize that. Get rid of that. I don't think that's the American way. The American way is to say you're free to do whatever you want. But if you want to have the full civic privileges, then, yes, you have to know the same thing about the country that an immigrant has to in order to earn the right to vote. And the fact of the matter is young people, especially age 18 to 25, Voting rates are rock bottom. So I actually predict voting rates will skyrocket, Lawrence, amongst young people if we actually make the act of voting mean something. Roger, Our founding fathers envisioned a country where people have skin in the game, where people actually, as citizens, have duties. Yeah. We've forgotten that. So I think reviving that while decriminalizing the selective service requirement, that is less government involvement <laughs> while also improving our sense of citizenship and I think a lot duty. of so young right. people would, would agree with you on that point. I want to move to something else because I got limited time with you. There's this new poll sure. that came out in the New York Times, and it's a New York Times Siena poll right here. And it said 24%, and this is talking about what they will likely support as it relates to the primary. 24% said a candidate who focuses on defeating woke in schools, media, and culture. But 65% said a candidate who focuses on restoring law and order in streets at, and at the border. Um, do you feel like the Republicans, some in the race, have focused too much on the woke and not more on economic policies, for example? Well, I do. But one of the things I've said since the start of this campaign is that wokeism, it's just a symptom of a deeper national identity crisis in our country. We have to fill that void. For too long as conservatives, I think we have been running from something. Now is our moment to start running to something. What does it mean to be an American? If we can answer that question, Lawrence, revive our self-confidence, yes, that is how we grow our economy, unapologetically embracing free market capitalism, the best known system to man to lift people up from poverty, unlock American energy, put people back to work by no longer paying them to stay at home. Yes, this is how we grow an economy. 
But we can only adopt these policies if we actually revive our sense of who we are as Americans. Mm -hmm. And so to me, some people say the woke issues are, some people say the economic issues are over here. Actually, I think both of these go hand in glove with reviving our missing national identity as Americans. And frankly, I think that's why we've been so successful. I've gone from 0.0% mm -hmm. in March in the polls to now actually polling at the unambiguous third in the national polls across the Republican primary, even before the first debate. Many of those supporters are young people. Yeah. And I think they're responsive to that message of national identity. Vivek, uh, the former president just took the stage a few minutes ago, and he was talking about Bidenomics. Uh, let's play the sound from the president. One of the most important issues of the campaign will be who can rescue our country from the burning wreckage of Bidenomics. You know what that stands for, right? Henceforth, it'll be defined as inflation, taxation, submission, and failure. Under my leadership, we built the greatest economy in the history of the world. We actually built the greatest economy in the history of the world. Yeah, a, a lot of people are in pain, Vivek. Final words. So look, I think that Biden has been a disaster because his philosophy of economic growth is creating more government jobs. Mm -hmm. What I think we need is getting not only government out of the way, but standing for pro-growth policies. And Lawrence, here's the little secret. You ought to talk about that national crisis of pride in our country. Young people aren't proud to be American anymore. Well, it turns out young people, all people, we're more proud of our country when we're making more money in that country. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm a, an unapologetic proponent of economic growth. That's how we revive our national character. It's who we are. And that's why many of my policies are driving us to 5% GDP growth, which I do believe is achievable if we unshackle the constraints we've applied. Vivek, thanks so much for taking some time with us. I hope you come back. Thank you, Lawrence. Good to see you. You got it.